I started wrestling when I was six. Um, the reason I got into wrestling was because I was quite a shy kid. I was not too confident, didn't mix with other kids too well. And uh, my mum and dad took me down to wrestling just to kind of bring me out my shell really and build up my confidence. Michael was pestering the life out of me to go under. Michael was like the run to the litter. He was a little scrawny little lad with a big mop of her. I said, go on then, I'll take you. So I took him and he floored everybody. He was a natural. I was gobsmacked. And then when I went, you know, I was quite a natural at it. The coach said it was, I was good. I was more good at getting, getting out of things, really, because I was quite small and fast. I was good at getting out of things. The coach said he was good, so I kind of took to it straight away. And, um, you know, I carried on coming back, getting better and better. And my, a few of my mates went, but they, they kind of went into rugby, obviously, because of Wigan Town, it's more mainly rugby. But I, I stuck at it. He had a coach after Roy. I mean, I, I was coaching him intermittently, but he had a coach after Roy called Chris Whelan, who is also, or was also, Tyrone Woodley's uh, university uh, assistant coach and Ben Askren's assistant coach at Missouri University. Chris came over here on a programme for five years, which was um, basically funded by this merchant banker, and he invested quite a bit of money into British wrestling. He got hold of Michael at about, I'd say he was probably about eight, eight years old. And within the first year he said, this guy's gonna go all the way, he's gonna do good. He's gonna be a world champion. Um, unfortunately, Chris left after about four or five years of Michael's thing, so he left when he was about 12. But his, his predictions, Michael stayed in the wrestling game till about 12 years old, and then he finished wrestling for about a year and a half. He came back to it, and it's when he came back to it, that's when we knew we had something special and he was going to progress to a, an elite level. The biggest accomplishment in, in freestyle wrestling is, is definitely going to be the bronze at Commonwealth Games. So a Commonwealth Games medalist, not many people have done it in wrestling. So that, that was a big, big thing for me. And then, you know, getting to the UFC, which is only the beginning for me, but it's still, it's still a goal, a short-term goal that I've always had. So that, that was a big thing for me too. To be honest, Getting into the FC was one thing, but to, when you get in the FC, you've got to be ready to fight anyone. And I'm ready to fight anyone. So if they tell me to fight the champion tomorrow, I'll fight the champion tomorrow. And I'll go out there to win. So, anyone. Well, when he first told me, um, I know wrestling inside out, because I coach it. But basically, the MMA was completely different. Um, I was a little bit nervous, because the attacks can come from anywhere. It's not just 
in wrestling you'd got an idea where they're going to go but with the MMA the head kicks and the fists things like that I was immensely nervous I still am really nervous when I feel sick when he goes out there and fights it's a horrible feeling brilliant when he finishes and he's had his hands raised but terrible before he goes out so yeah I was dubious but in another way I was glad he was following his dreams I think the wrestlers too, obviously there's, you know, there's I think there's seven, seven champions in the UFC who's wrestlers background. So that, that kind of says it all as well. But I think you can kind of judge the fight a little bit. If you're, um, if you if you want to take them down, you can take them down. If you want to defend the takedown, then you can defend the takedown. You've got a good wrestling background. But I think a lot, a lot of things that wrestling brings over to MMA is the, uh, the mental side of things as well. You know, the confidence you're going to get, the, the, the discipline you've got for weight cutting, the, uh, the, the fact that wrestlers are always used to being uncomfortable. It is, it is a big part of it, so they're always tough and they're ready to ground out a fight. Well, Michael's always been immensely proud of Wigan and he's always publicised that when he's, uh, when he's been talking. And, and as a Wiganer, I'm really proud of him. And I hope Wigan gets behind him when he, uh, when he does fight and as he progresses in the UFC. Because it's a big thing, it's the most famous fight show in the world. The people of Wigan have got behind me because there's not many people really um, into mixed martial arts massively in Wigan and to get to the UFC of a Wiganer. Like I said, if the people of Wigan's got behind me a lot. You know, I can't, I can't, can't thank them enough because the, the support's been amazing so far. I'm sure it'll carry on. I know, I know there's a lot of them coming down to UFC London, which is going to be good. So, I, like I said, to, to, to be a Wiganer and, and do that it is amazing for me. It's just, when he's made it, I know he'll appreciate it. And now he's actually got his chance now. He's, he's worked his way up through the ranks, took any fight and every fight, wherever it may be. Gone to Japan, fought at a few days' notice and fought in, the, in their country. Travelled all that way. Brazil, all these places where he's gone to, it's now paying dividends. The closer I get to the fight, the more excited I get. And especially for this one, because it's a big one. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to fight week. The fans being around the hotel and and doing all the media obligations. I can't wait to, to just get out there and, and put a performance on and, and get that performance of the night bonus.